Hi, this is Nancy McCocken, and you're watching Living, Living Karma Yoga, so welcome. Living Karma Yoga is a program that brings you all that the yoga world has to offer you. Yoga as we know it um, here in this area, probably in this country in the West, is um, primarily posture. So it's beautiful for maintaining strength and flexibility and mobility in the joints. But there's so much more to yoga. There's mantra, which are um, phrases that help us um, train our minds. There is meditation, um, mudras, hand positions that direct energy and very specific ways. Um, fashion, particular clothing that help us feel better in our bodies and um, and um, enhance our aura. So, and food um, and lifestyle. So, Living Karma Yoga brings you a variety of things in each program or throughout our programming to help you take yoga off your mat, which is really where it belongs. Yoga is not just about physical posture, it's about learning how to live more uh, joyfully and more. Uh, with more prosperity and according to uh, yoga philosophy this is what we all deserve this is who we are deep inside we are uh, beautiful and luminous creatures my program today is um, or our program today is focusing on um, our teacher training and yoga immersion it's really difficult to get the full breadth of what yoga represents by going to a 45 minute or an hour and a half um, yoga practice even even if you go every single day teachers introduce a little bit of philosophy but it's really hard to put it together in a comprehensive way so an immersion or a teacher training helps us do that my guests today, um, Sarah Williams, Sabrina Atto, and Debbie McElroy, have all been through Karma's teacher training. In fact, they were all in the same class several mm -hmm. years ago. I think 2014, 2015. Yeah. Um, Sounds right. <laughs> you know, uh, and so um, they each came in with different expectations um, and different um, a purpose. Not everybody intended to be a teacher. In fact, I know one person sitting here who absolutely <laughs> said she would never teach. Um, Ever. And two teacher trainings later, she is doing that. <laughs> so um, let me introduce and let you know uh, a little bit about who they are. Debbie here is a graduate of Eastern Michigan University where she studied occupational therapy. Uh, she's a very active mom of four nearly grown children, and she teaches yoga to friends and to neighbors. Okay. Sabrina holds a BA in, psycholo in psychology from Oakland University. She's the author of Transcending Anxiety, a book that teaches people how to use the tools of yoga to ease anxiety and stress. Mm -hmm. Sarah Williams is owner of Forecast First LLC, a company that manages sporting goods, mm -hmm. one of the few women in the industry, <laughs> um, inventory and sales for vendor and retail accounts. She's also one of Karma's teachers. So I'm going to ask you all uh, the same question. How did you get involved in yoga? And I'm going to start with Sarah. How did I get involved with yoga? Um, years before, three years before uh, I started the first teacher training, I quit smoking. And it was early March. And for around two weeks, as they say, the wheels came off the wagon. I was extremely emotional. It was a very, very difficult time. and. Two weeks after I quit, I um, looked up online, closest yoga studio, Kamar Yoga, went on a Saturday, and from that point on, never looked back. So really, it was a survival technique technique for me. Yeah. That's wonderful. Yeah. And you never thought about smoking again? Well, that's not I true. But <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. Uh, <laughs> no, I'd be a liar if I said that. <laughs> um, but I have not smoked again. Right, so. okay. <laughs> okay. And Sabrina? Uh, so I want to say it was about my first yoga class was a little less than 20 years ago. Wow. But it was a, very much, it was right out of high school. It was very much, um, I went into it to manage stress because my mother suggested you know, like you need to try yoga it'll definitely 
help with the tension you're experiencing. It was a very love-hate relationship at first until I found a practice, teachers, and style that resonated mm -hmm. with me. But yeah, it started a long time ago and slowly, slowly evolved over a couple decades. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. What did your mother practice? You know, she went to Marion High School, and that's where she was first introduced to yoga. Okay. And so, in the seventies. Wow. Yeah, I don't. So that's I don't know. But she did take me actually to my first yoga class. Sweet. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah. Oh. And Debbie, how did you get involved with it? So I started yoga in like a community center setting, mm -hmm. and I was just looking for something that was physical and something that. Actually, the first time I think I tried with my mom, mm -hmm. and then thereafter just started to find little classes here and there, and then started following a teacher that was at Karma Yoga, came to Karma Yoga, absolutely loved the classes there, and just get got more and more into the yoga, realizing that I think with my busy lifestyle um, and as well as I think I have a little bit of um, anxious personality and looking for a way to kind of decrease my anxiety levels um, as well as dealing with everyday mm -hmm. um, tasks or just getting able to deal with life um, right. that comes Taking your yoga off the mat. Exactly, <laughs> taking my yoga off the mat. Okay. Sabrina, this next question's for you. Yeah. Um, why did you consider a teacher training? So originally, it was for myself. It was a personal. Um, it was personal to better understand yoga. I thought it was really interesting. I liked the philosophy that was taught in classes. I liked more than the movement. I really appreciated the heartfeltness of mm -hmm. a class, and so I was interested in not learning more about the asana practice and alignment and stuff like that, but. It, even deeper, just getting a better feel of yoga so that when I did practice it, I felt like I was, I knew what I was doing. Mm -hmm. But then once I went through teacher training and just the more I thought about it, um, my feelings towards teaching changed, especially okay. after doing karma's training. Okay. So when you say more the heart part oh, of yeah. it, what does that mean? Well, for me, especially in the classes I was taking, um, I guess the the themes were uh, the themes that I gravitated towards the heart that I'm talking about that I that I gravitated toward was um, an idea of getting grounded, being mm -hmm. connected to your breath, turning inward. There was an introspection mm -hmm. that uh, was happening that mm -hmm. I really that I enjoyed that okay. I liked. So connecting to when I think of heart, I think of love. Yeah. Okay. And so um, in feeling grounded, mm -hmm. uh, do you feel like it was more getting more connected to a deeper part of yourself? I guess when you put it that way, yeah. I mean, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And putting words in your mouth. Well, no, but <laughs> I, I, yes, okay. I do think so. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I wouldn't have probably put it that way, but yeah. <laughs> okay. And Sarah, <laughs> what? And well, did you, you never intended to teach? Originally, no, but actually going through Karma's training, it gave me the confidence to want to teach. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So the question is. <laughs> the question is, <laughs> why did you take a teacher training? Oh. Sarah and Debbie have actually taken it twice. Right. Yeah. So first teacher training, um, I took because, like I said, it must have been, I started three years prior to 2014. I truly, as opposed to Sabrina, I, I connected with the, um, the philosophies. I mean, we certainly have our share of wonderful teachers who teach the history or the philosophy and you get those little um, snippets at the beginning or end of class, even during sometimes, but um, I really wanted to get the postures. I really felt that as to improve my body, to improve myself, it was really all about the, the postures, about the asana. and. Um, and so I was over the moon when I couldn't do it during the week and all teacher trainings prior up to this one had been during the summers or during the days and that was out when you guys switched to a format mm -hmm. which was ugh, on the weekends and extended through five months and it was wonderful. Um, I thought, yeah, I'm going to learn how to practice yoga. Physically. And physically, yeah. 
and then I got into teacher training and fell in love with Ashtanga and fell in love with all those asanas, but then you guys tricked me. No. <laughs> you, um, you brought in music. You brought in, as you said at the beginning during the introduction, you brought in mantra and mudra and history and philosophy, and it became a vortex and a swirl, and you, you know, you can't imagine, well, I suppose you can imagine how much there is of yogic everything, lifestyle, everything, and it permeates you. And, you know, having the blessings of having you and, and Lynn and Catherine, um, it really became life-altering for mm -hmm. me. Um, and, and I'll share that Nancy and I were on the phone the other day, and we were talking about questions, and, um, and I said that perhaps she should have a program that interviewed the children or the oh. spouses or the people involved mm -hmm. in nice. the lives of people who take yoga teacher training because where we can feel the change in our lives, I'm a single parent to a, a now 24-year-old son, but he, he will tell you, we were on vacation this summer, and he will say, mom changed, you know, and it was wonderful. And um, you don't realize what you need until it's there, right? And the influence that you have on everybody around you. So I went back two years later, and to learn more. And as you said, now I teach. So right. it's been a huge blessing. Yeah, good. And Debbie, did you intend to teach? Initially, I think my aim. I think ultimately, I would. I was thinking about teaching. Okay. Um, I also knew I wanted to improve my own personal practice. Mm -hmm. um, I also wanted to figure out what it meant to say taking yoga off the mat. Mm -hmm. um, that's a that's a hard one because we talk about it all the time, but it's difficult to. Yes. How does it apply to everyday right. life? And then I found that my family also noticed change in me. <laughs> Some days it's I haven't been able to get to yoga, and they're like, "When are you going to yoga?" <laughs> <laughs> There is definitely <laughs> palpable, <laughs> and but my practice improved. My understanding of the practice improved. It got to the point where what it did in my body and what it did to my mind, I wanted to share that knowledge with others. So that's why I moved into wanting to teach. Mm -hmm. um, so much of just. Like the first time I took the teacher training, I felt my practice had improved and it only whet my appetite to learn more. Mm -hmm. So it was on to the next class to get more experience and more understanding. Um, we're always students, so I'm always learning. Right. Um, but I really feel it's been so beneficial in my own life. And mm -hmm. just so what changes have your, has your family <laughs> noticed? Um, a more relaxed mom. <laughs> um, also, um, I'm able to teach them skills to decrease anxiety and stress. And um, taking a little more time to understand it's important we take time for ourselves sometimes. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we get so wrapped up in our everyday lives that we forget about ourselves. We do. We do, and even you know I do, and I don't. I only have a dog half the time, so uh, it's easy to get to think of the other things as priorities. Yes, easy, easy to. So, um, Sabrina, how yeah. do you? What do you notice as changes? Um, partly through yoga, but partly the teacher training. How does mm -hmm. that? affected your life you are you wrote a book yeah. after teacher training <laughs> you're doing workshops now yeah are you doing a podcast too uh no okay not yet okay. <laughs> um let's see you know teacher training really gave me a sense of confidence i think mm -hmm. uh, i maybe tend to have the the personality that wants to like i won't do something unless i think i'm going to be perfect at it or i have right. all this knowledge behind right. me like oh, I need to do more trainings and more trainings and what I came away with through karma's training was that my asana practice like the physical practice of yoga doesn't have to be um, very impressive doesn't have to be this crazy acrobatic practice right. um, 
I don't have to have all the answers in order to help people. Mm -hmm. I don't have to have all the answers in order to do the things I want to do. Right. So it just gave me that confidence to be present, be where I'm, where I'm at, be okay with that, and um, take step one and feel comfortable doing that. Right. Step one yeah. and step two and step yeah. three. You know, what you said is, uh, about being perfect mm -hmm. uh, in order to do it, I had a private with a woman um, yesterday or maybe it was Monday um, who's been taking yoga at the community center. Uh, and she said, I have no idea what I'm doing. She said, and I'm a nurse, I'm type A, and I want to be perfect at yeah. what I do. Yeah. And I said, you know, it's not about that. Forget that look at somebody if you don't understand and then don't assume that everybody takes that same shape it's about feeling you have to feel something in the body so I put her into a couple poses she, I said what do you feel I said she said nothing I have no proprioception so I had her change her position a little bit you know so so the person next to you is not doing that correct the, the same th thing you're doing move your legs until you feel something it's about getting out of our heads right. mm -hmm. and into our bodies mm -hmm. and being in the body because that's where we live yeah yeah and actually another huge thing I took away from teacher training as you were speaking I thought of this I had a meditation practice prior mm -hmm. to teacher training and I had abandoned it thinking I was doing it wrong right and um, it was you and Catherine really helping at least me to understand and I'm sure everyone else in the practice that like what a meditation practice was was and that there, well, there's no right right yeah. so that was huge because I, I walked away with remembering what it felt like to meditate and then wanting to get back into that practice mm -hmm. Awesome. So, yeah. Good. That's really wonderful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's true. You carry it every day. I mean, yesterday I had to make a phone call and it wasn't going to be a pleasant phone call and I wasn't looking forward to it. And so the inevitable thing is to kick it down the road or push it off. And um, what yoga, what this practice has brought to me is that you can pause and all of a sudden you have these tools. You, mm -hmm. you can say, okay, I'm going to take five minutes. I'm going to sit. I'm going to close my eyes, I'm going to breathe, I'm going to center myself, and then pick up the phone. And it doesn't mean you sit and rehearse the conversation in your phone and, and worry about this. You actually do the opposite. You let the void come in, and through that void, there's clarity, and you can speak truly, walk through difficult things with poise, with, with presence. With poise, because you get a sense of what's really important. Correct. Mm -hmm. other than worrying about what they're going to say or think about you or those things, mm -hmm. right. you know? Right. So you own your truth. And you're in that moment. Right. You're not, wor you're not living in the wreckage of your future. You're in that Which moment. Which hasn't happened yet. Right. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Which right. hasn't happened yet. Supposedly. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Right. Or in the past. Right. Whatever. Okay. So you were talking about, um, and, and you're bringing us home, uh, do you think you'd be able to do this and be as uh, calm, and I'll throw that out to everybody, if you hadn't had this teacher training? Uh, no. <laughs> no. You mean be here right now? <laughs> yeah, but also to uh, be as equanimous in your own lives, because there's this sense that, you know, well, I go to yoga three times a week, you know, and I do my asana practice, and I go home and I meditate, but what is that, yeah. how is it different? You know, mm. sorry for I'm gonna just no, speak ahead. up. I want to say yes, but probably not. And not, the reason I say that, I'm somebody who's for a long time, for 20 years, really focused on personal growth and work that is introspective. And I've always thought that's really important, at least for me. Right. And I think choosing to teach yoga and teach people what I've learned and be a guide for. I guess introspection and in, in the tools mm -hmm. of yoga keeps me in check from wanting to like when I do fall off the bandwagon and I just fall into maybe poor unhealthy habits um, I hold myself to a different standard because I'm like oh how can you teach people they, if, right, if right. you're not going to live what you're teaching right. so right. to me I don't know probably not I wouldn't I might be somewhere along the path but maybe not as committed to it 
because I've made it a choice to teach people, I feel like I, I have to hold myself to a certain standard. Right. right. If that mm -hmm. makes sense. Yeah. That makes sense. It makes a lot of sense. I feel that way myself mm -hmm. too. Whenever I tell my students, you know, listen to your body, your body knows. I think, well, when was the last time you exactly. <laughs> listen to your body? Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You put yourself in check. You're like, right. Oh. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Definitely. yeah. But there are other things, it seems to me, too, that you have gained, like a friendship. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's my amazing. gosh. You know, yeah. Look at us. <laughs> it's like, that's huge. And community. Yes. Right. And, um, and because it's, it's an immersion into, I mean, there's a lot of reading involved, and there's a lot of thinking involved, and there's coming together, mm -hmm. you know, for several hours. Your training was once a week on Saturday and sometimes Sunday. Sometimes maybe. Sunday. Mm -hmm. You know, um, future trainings will be just one concentrated weekend a month. But you're coming together and, and immersing yourself in things that if you did it once a week might take 10 years. Right. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. You right. know, and I think that must have an effect, yes. Oh, I absolutely, I mean, the bond between, I oh. mean, just the three women, mm -hmm. four women here mm -hmm. is, is tremendous. Um, and we stay in touch, we encourage each other, we support yeah. one another 100%. Um, a sister. We, yeah, it's a, like a sisterhood. I mean, we have a friend in Germany. Hi, Simone. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, you know, who is precious to us that, you know, we're in contact with. And I think... You know, we're not unique. You put yourself in a, a situation where you are embracing growth and embracing change within yourself, and that can be very fright, fearful, very and vulnerable. Very yes. vulnerable. Vulnerable is the word in my head. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I mean, and I was thinking about the time when we did. Um, we stood and we had to have our partner just look at our bodies and how we stood and alignments and how and you have to stand there and have someone assess you. And that to me was terrifying. And then you turn around and you assess them. But by the end of it, it was the joy of that was that the takeaway, we're all different. Right. You know, Debbie's right. short. Everybody. You know, <laughs> everybody's Everybody. different. You know, you, you have different hand structure. You have shoulders, hips, feet, you know, flat feet, mm -hmm. extra are, you know, and you learn through this physiology. I mean, this is just one tiny component one tiny piece, yeah. of yeah. what we learn about loving ourselves and loving each other, and then being able to assist other people, our community, our friends, our family in in yeah, opening your body. That word assessment probably is scary. Yeah, it's it was basically observation. Yeah. It was, yeah, yeah. It is. yeah, yeah. But we don't look at one another very often. It's I don't either. Well, right. as an occupational therapist, I used to <laughs> do that. Yes. And I, what I, I also enjoy about the about yoga is that it's. I often hear people say, you know, I can't do yoga. I'm not flexible. Mm. Right. right. Well, what you find is is that when you start to delve into your body, you start to realize how your body functions, and not everybody's body functions the same, but as you continue on your practice, things start to open up. You start creating space. You start being able to move differently. And as we, as teachers, we, we've seen our growth. Mm -hmm. and we want to just, we share it with each other, and we share it with others. And we're just, we're so much more authentic in our own bodies right now, and we want to just share that knowledge. We're eager to to have mm -hmm. people know it's not just about the flexibility. It's like anybody can do it, and there's so much to gain, and mm -hmm. and how we address others and how we feel about each other. It's right. it just opens you up. And I can say is that it, it, thank God for the aging process. As I'm getting older and such like that, even within you've done it for decades and decades. I've done it for maybe ten years now. I've been in yoga. And in those 10 years, you know, going from 45 to 55, there's changes that happen in your body. And oh, yeah. what yoga has allowed me to do is to, you have the tools to modify to ex acceptance. You have, um, you know, just it's, it's not accepting limitations, but it's acknowledging where you are at this moment, whether it's age, whether it's the day, whether it's, you know, 
And the ultimate thing is, I think, and we're starting to wrap up, I'm going to ask each one of you to say one more thing if you want to, but for me, who's even older than you all are, um, it's accepting the limitations yeah. and accepting the limitation that ends with not being. Right. <laughs> Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. and that's, I think, absolutely huge. And once I accept that, and yoga helps me do that, then life becomes really sweet. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So is there one more thing anybody wants to say? You, if I would say if somebody was interested in doing teacher training mm -hmm. and they just feel called or curious, but they're, they're hesitant because they're scared, they don't know, to, don't know what to expect, Go with your gut if it's saying to try it, honestly. That's what I would say. I would and do. that's a good thing for all of us to do always when we have a decision to make. We run it through our head and we go, oh yeah, we should. Mm -hmm. Run it through the gut and if the gut starts to churn, churn. it's not a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. But if it makes you hungry, then right. it's probably a good thing to try. Thank you for that. Yeah, you're yeah. I just find that, you know, with the teacher training, all the things that before when I used to go to classes that may not have um, resonated with me because I didn't quite understand it, because I've gone through more training, mm -hmm. things are starting to come together and it makes more sense and it has more meaning when I'm doing my practice. Awesome. Yeah, for sure. Awesome. Yeah. Good. Interesting. Thank, Thank you fun. all. <laughs> Thank, thank you. you. And namaste. namaste. Can we do it OM together? Yes. We can. And then I'll thank the audience at home. So at home, if you want to join me, bring your palms together. Take a nice deep inhalation and just hold your breath for a moment. Exhale completely. And on the next exhalation, we'll OM together. Inhale. Oh. That vibration in and of itself is calming. It can get rid of all the, a lot of the junk in your head. Um, thank you all for being here. Thank Bloomfield Community Television. Thank you at home for watching. Um, if you're interested in our teacher training, uh, it starts in October. Um, you can go to the website, uh, www.karma-yoga.net. You'll see it says teacher training immersion there. Uh, you can also email me at um, Nancy at karma-yoga.net. Um, we have an open house with Catherine on September 6th, 7th. Um, you can find that on the website too. Um, thanks for joining us. And um, if you're interested in our classes, um, also find us on the website, www.karma-yoga.net. And we hope to see you in class and namaste. May the long time sun